Hey, this is Ryan from the Proxy Network support team. I'm here with another video, this time to show you Proxy Network's flagship product, Proxy Pro 10. It uses the same hub and spoke connectivity model as in versions prior. The components consist of the host, of which there are two flavors. The installed version runs as a service and is always reporting in. And we have a temporary host called the Host on Demand, accessible by the user by visiting your web console landing page for non-domain non -domain joined, non-corporately issued machines, personal machines. And the master would be the viewer that is used on any technician's PC or network administrator's computer. The component that negotiates the connections between the hosts and the masters would be the Proxy Pro RAS server. It's going to negotiate those connections and be able to route those connections to those machines out there based on security policies set by the network administrator or the person implementing the software. The web console would be your landing page for uh, both administration and users that, users that need to share their desktops. They'll click share my desktop and it will download and activate a temporary instance of our traditional proxy host. So if I click find a desktop, I'll be prompted for credentials. And if I click log in, I'll get here to the landing page showing me my list of available machines. Since Proxy Pro 10 can now delegate authentication to the new component called the Proxy Identity Manager, we can now support authentication beyond domain accounts. We now can authenticate with Microsoft accounts, which gives us two-factor authentication. Uh, so if I select the right account here and type in my password, I'll be able to provide that first factor, and then I will be asked for the second. And I don't believe I have the app accessible, although I do, but I'll say that I don't. I'll click sign in a different way, and then request a text message. And momentarily I'll get one, and here it is, 362781. All right, so let me pop that in and I'll get logged in. So there's only one authentication required here, and I'm in and I see my console and I can connect to my host at this point. The grouping structure can be created uh, the way you want, or it can be set such that it would match that of your Active Directory structure. The host on demand group will show any machines that have the temporary client launched on it. And my machine's got it launched, so you see me, but I thought I had launched it on a different machine, so I wouldn't connect to myself. I can right click and connect in browser, allowing me to control the machine from a Chrome tab. This is now possible, uh, remote desktop connectivity and remote desktop control is now possible from your Android from within the browser and you can connect to as many machines as you'd like and it would be treated as a single license. This is a new feature for Proxy 10. Android users, rejoice! The other way to connect to the machines would be to launch in our traditional viewer, Proxy Pro Masters, the, the click once viewer. It launches a connection within uh, its own window here and would allow you to do a little bit more than just the basic file, basic uh, remote control here. Uh, beyond at the bottom of the control window, file transfer tab allows us to send files back and forth. Remote printing lets us send print jobs from the machine you're controlling and have those jobs show up at a printer next to you. And remote management allows you to get some extra insight into the machine that you've connected to. Uh, let me expand a few nodes and we'll talk about a couple. The computer logs everything to the Windows Event Viewer for the most part uh, for some of the issues that people are going to complain about. So you'll be able to see what John Smith or Mary Sue complained about earlier in the day by checking out the Windows Event Viewer logs. The registry editor will allow you to make a one-off registry edit. We can pull up a list of all the running processes and kill a process behind the scenes. And by the way, I say behind the scenes because the user could be working away on their task at hand, and you can be inspecting what Windows had to say about their problem in the back end without disrupting them. We can also look at the service control manager and start, stop, and restart services. 
see what users are defined locally on the machine, see what software the machine has installed, and what hardware the machine is equipped with. The Recordings tab of the web console is where you go to retrieve recordings made in the past or see the recordings associated with the particular machine. And we have this filter mechanism built in that lets us search by the recordings associated by a user. Or you can just type in the machine that you want to see the recordings in associated with. And to initiate a recording, we'll use the Host tab. You'll see your list. And we'll right click John Smith, recording, and then record. We'll specify the time. Let's go 10 minutes. Go OK. And the server will kick off a recording that'll last 10 minutes. If you're interested, you could adjust the recording time or stop it. And you can do so if you'd like. I'll just do that. Let's go back to the recordings tab and play one. So I know this is a decent one here. We'll right click play and it will launch in our click once playback window and it's got some fast forward controls here just to see what's been going on in the machine without spending too much time watching it uh, we've got the size controls to make it fit to window fit to full screen or just have it show one to one as is the case right now if we really like your video you can export to WMV and make your own little training library of commonly asked support questions. Uh, if you get the same question multiple times a week, some customers have told us that they make a library of videos that show the users how to solve their own problems. Just another way to free up your time to move on to bigger and better projects. So if you use the recording, that's great. If you don't, that's fine too. The other way to play back a recording is to right click and play in browser and we do support playback through HTML5. So yes, this extends to playback to, H to uh, Android devices. I'd like to talk about the proxy host, which is the component that runs on each machine, runs as a service, and can be hidden from the end user. The client will allow, permission, will allow connections to the machine by default. Uh, some customers prefer that the end users approve the connections, which would be the case with the center radio button. The third radio button is request, and this would extend the courtesy by asking the user if you would allow the connection, the difference being that you would connect anyways if the machine was unattended. Other screen, other optimizations we can do would be found in the screen tab. We support kernel mode screen capture and user mode. The difference with user mode is that it's our own and allows us to hand configure the uh, bandwidth consumption and the image quality that the host sends when you're making connections. Other things that you would might want to be able to do is suppress the input of the local, of the user on the other side upon demand. This is so you won't win you will always win those input control battles when the end user doesn't quite know that you're trying to help them. The effects tab lets us suppress extra extra effects on the machine like the desktop wallpaper or uh, the contents of a window when you're dragging things around. And this would allow you to get the best performance possible by telling the software to ignore colorful things like the desktop wallpaper on my demo machine. The general tab would allow us to configure how we want the machine to be identified. I've configured this machine to show itself by the identity of the logged in user as well as the uh, uh, NetBIOS computer name so that it's presented together. Not to go off on a tangent, but a very important feature of our host is its ability to, to communicate the identity of the logged in user and the computer name to you and make it easy for you to search for them by those criteria. If you know you're searching for John Smith, you can just start typing in John and it'll come right up after a couple of characters. It's the same holds true for the proxy master. If you have a large group of hosts, hundreds, maybe thousands, it's very easy to find machines if you know partial names or partial computer names. So you can get in, get out, and move on with your day. Uh, other, other preferences you might have might be if you want there to be a, a beep on connect, a chime when the connection is made or closed for that audible notification. Beyond that, you'll have a tray icon selection where there, you want it to be hidden when there's uh, no connection made and only have it show up when there's a connection active and you can enable or disable 
the connection notices in the bottom right hand corner of the screen when connections are made or closed to a host machine as an added courtesy to let the end user know what's going on. It can also be activated for file transfers and there's also a user list that will identify the users that are connected to the machine. I don't want to forget the gateway tab. The gateway tab allows us to tell the host what server to report itself to. Typically this is set at deployment time, but manually we can say add gateway, put in the DNS for the server, if your server is external to this host, or if it's in the same network, server name would do just fine. Administrators of the proxy web console in your environment would have access to the gateway tab, and this lets us set a few backend things like how long should the server wait before removing stale workstations? Now you may have high turnover and you might want the server to remove workstations after the server hasn't heard anything from them within maybe a week. That way you don't have to go into the servers at a glance tab or host tab to delete hosts manually. You'll just see extra offline hosts and nobody wants that so you'll have an uncluttered list if you set this number appropriately. We can also tell the server how long we want it to wait before releasing a license. You may have some users that stay logged in while they're at lunch and you have other folks trying to use the license. We can tell the software to log you out after X amount of minutes of inactivity to free up the software for other people. Those might be the highlights in the general section. Uh, the web console section lets us set a message of the day to be displayed at the top of the screen for all users. Maybe you might put your help desk number in there or something else. We can also tell the software to use the rebranded images that you might choose to use in place of our stock images here. And beneath that we can tell the server how often to update its database. Not too interesting there. Moving beyond that we can set which protocols we want the server to listen for hosts on and masters on. By default it will use 2303 UDP and TCP inside your network and also SSL and this is what we would enable for external connections and typically the port would be 8443 or in this case 443. We would also set address restrictions within the software although the bigger hammer would be at your firewall level. We could set restrictions that say that the gateway server will permit connections and ignore and, uh, and or ignore hosts that are coming in from certain address ranges and disallow the masters from connecting if they're not coming in from a valid IP address range. Uh, beyond that, we'll see uh, auditing. Uh, we can tell the software to store the audit log in an alternate directory if the installation default is uh, uh, not going to fly. And we can also tell the server to create a new audit log every day if you uh, practice different archival purposes. And we can tell the software also never to delete auto logs if we so choose. And let's go down a little bit further to the uh, recording section. So the software will allow recordings to machines, as I've mentioned before, and they're stored in the installation directory of the software. And you can tell it to be storing recordings in maybe a network share, a different drive letter. And we can tell the software to record that record the host at a lesser screen capture profile. Sometimes you just want to see what was happening on the machine and not every little bit of clarity is necessary. So we can tell the, so we can tell the server to just do the recordings at a lesser rate because we don't want them taking up too much room. That's the idea there. Automatic recording is a feature that kind of supplements this in that we can say uh, when certain machines are connected to within a certain site or group rather that the server would initiate a recording to go along with that connection. Alternatively, we can specify that a certain user, by putting in a username here, that they get a recording to go along with any session they initiate. Moving beyond that, we can set an automatic grouping policy that tells the server that when hosts come in from a certain IP address range, we'll stick them in the appropriate group that matches that. So if the machines are coming in from 192.168.1.1 through 255, we'll give it a safe number of addresses here and say we'll go into the local address group if I had one. And we can also tell it to just group machines by Active Directory rule. 
Uh, so if you have a you want your machines to be set up and your groups to be uh, groups to match that of your Active Directory structure, we could enable that if that's your preference. And those would be the highlights of the settings within the Gateway tab here. We can add a license, set local address ranges so that the server does not create unnecessary reverse connections to them, and set polling ranges, and gather information about the server for diagnostic purposes. Uh, that would be the highlights of uh, the Gateway tab here. The Gateway tab network sub tab is an interesting point because we would tell the software how we want the connection window and the host on demand components to communicate with the server from inside your network and also from outside your network. In the case of this server, we have it listening on this DNS alias here on Secure Web Sockets port 443. And this would be the port forward rule we would make on the firewall in, to match this. Customers would create an A record for their server, typically like proxy.servername or companyname.com, and that would be the address that would go in here. The Proxy Web Console's Activity tab is more of a snapshot in time in contrast to the Analytics tab. The Activity tab will give you a list of the connected users that are logged into the console the host machines that presently have connections to them. Screen recording activity is also listed here if there are any in progress. Reverse connections indicate the machines that are reporting into the server from outside the firewall. And this will give you a list of machines that are sending updates to the server and this should always be zero or near zero. The analytics tab is where we'll go to run a report that'll show who got into what machine and when. The services audit sub tab here is the most helpful because we can configure this to only show the connections made to machines within the past uh, 30 days by unchecking these tick boxes for other services. Let's say I want to log all the, or see a report of all the people who made a connection to proxy demo host one. If I click search, I'll get a list of all the people who made that connection, or 2018 rather, uh, along with the identity they were logged into Windows as, what time they connected, and what time they disconnected. So we can do the reverse by providing an account name here, domain slash jsmith. If I click search, I'll get a list of all the machines he connected to. So we hope to be able to provide you with the what audit related information you'd like to be able to have access to within a platform like this. Uh, we were sure to build in a print feature and also an export button so that you can look at the data in a uh, more digestible format such as Excel. And cut. So Proxy Pro lets you own and operate and manage your own remote desktop support portal for IT administration or help desk support. We'd love to invite you in for a demo and we can answer your questions live and have a chat about your current remote desktop software uh, situation. This is Ryan from Proxy Network Support. Thanks for taking a look and we look forward to speaking with you soon.